Woe to the teachers of the law, the day of the saints is here. Woe to the Welcome of to God the News Network where the saints are rising, where we are here to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Are you a saint? How do you find out? By listening to God News Network and, of course, the Word of God. Thanks for joining us today. We are so excited to have another live show here that we are uh, recording in advance, so a lot of you will hear it on podcasting. But uh, Albert and I are live. And matter of fact, uh, Albert is with me from Destin, Florida, getting the sunshine down there and spreading the gospel to the big state of Florida. How you doing, brother? Great, great. Uh, it was a beautiful day today here at Destin. A little bit cloudy, but uh, the beaches were beautiful. And uh, it was just great. <laughs> awesome, man. It was beautiful here, too. Uh, we are blessed with some sunshine today. Well, as we dive in here at God News Network, I want to catch you up to date on some of the stuff that's just kind of crazy going on out there. Now they're attacking Donald Trump because of the fact that he says it's unfair what the judge is doing to him uh, because of the fact that um, he is saying that uh, the lady who uh, initially started the lawsuit uh, when they got her on and did her depositions. She was saying nothing but great things about Trump University. So what did they do? The judge uh, was asked by the prosecution who started the whole lawsuit to recuse her from it so that her testimony would not be counted. <laughs> <laughs> That's then, something. So what happened? The judge agrees. So the lady who starts the lawsuit she won't get to speak because her testimony was in favor of Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> what a fiasco. Yeah, so they wouldn't let her go on. And the judge agreed, and they're continuing the lawsuit. Why? Because that's what they do, attack people like that. You know, I'm so sick and tired of all the goofiness that goes on out there and you hear one side of the story. Right before I came on, I was listening to the live broadcast of NBC News. And what did they do? They were reporting only the fact that Donald Trump was saying it's unfair. It's unfair. That's all they got on the news. They didn't report why it was unfair. They forgot about the lady out there who started the lawsuit. And she was so positive about Trump University that the attorneys asked the judge to get rid of her testimony. <laughs> so therein lies the challenge. So ABC, ABC, CBS, MSNBC, all those places, it's just kind of weird what they're doing out there. And they're not reporting everything and they're getting caught. You know, they're finally getting caught. And people, what's funny is they think that we're not smart enough to figure all this out. You know, there's, there's a lot of ways that, um, that we have the ability to gather information. Fortunately, God is revealing that and bringing it all to the top. There's two things that, that float to the top. One of them is cream, and you can figure out the other one. Mm. Uh, well, Donald Trump is floating to the top, even though yeah. their goofiness is floating to the top. So well, I, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry, Albert. Uh, the, what's so strange about all this, Rick, is, okay, you know, uh, most of us think that uh, Trump is not a Christian. There's been a lot of Christians uh, saying that he's not Christian, but there's been a lot that do say that he's Christian. But regardless whether he's Christian or not, that's got utilized people who were not Christians. All the time. And, 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 uh, and not just that he utilized them, it's that people who are not Christian are not blind. They could see a system that have come to a mock and and uh, just because he did it or all the people have doing it doesn't mean that he can still say this is wrong and I want to change it. And he's capable of changing it. Uh, you know, it's so funny that they talk about all the time they bring out Trump and that he did this and that he did that and, and how evil he is and, and, and so forth. Even, you know, well-mean Christians uh, come out and say that. But, you know, 
it's so funny that I haven't seen any of those Christians or any other stations coming out and, and, and talking about the corruption that's going on in Washington, D.C. Exactly. All those politicians being paid. I mean, that's evil, yeah. too. That's even worse. That's worse. Those people were supposed to represent us, and they're not representing us. So, uh, you know, when they talk about corruption, I wish that they will also focus on the other side, that 70% of the American public has come out and say that Washington, D.C. is corrupted. They don't come out with that. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard telling, but I can tell you this, Albert. There's a lot of goofiness going on out there, and it's just one of those things where um, – you don't have to be a Christian to see it. You know, just like, for example, there's a lot of Muslims out there who believe what ISIS is doing is wrong. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're devout, loving people. And there are a lot of people who are Hindu that are seeing what ISIS is doing is wrong. You don't cut off the head of innocent children. You don't do those kinds of things. You don't blow up innocent people. There's just a right and a wrong. There's a good and, and, and an evil that does exist, and they both exist. And Satan wants his reign, and he's wanting to take it and and uh, just do things, and he's us- utilizing people all over the world. Well, Trump, you know, the fact that he, whether he's a Christian or not, the thing that we all agree with is he's seeing corruption, and he's exposing it, and they don't like it because they've had this power all along and they can do whatever they want to do because they're the media. Hey, we'll just twist it here. We'll twist it there. Make it spin a little bit, you know, uh, so that it comes across like this. You know what? There's always one side to every story. Let's get, let's get all the other sides. And usually the truth is somewhere in between the others. So. (laughs) And uh, just, just one more thing, uh, Rick, in, in reference to this, it's funny but before all this thing came up with Trump and all that, everybody, including the Christian world, thought that the media was corrupt and that you cannot trust the media for nothing that they say. And now all of a sudden, the media is not corrupt, and you could trust the media for everything they say about Trump or anybody else like that. I mean, go figure. Which one is it, that the media is not corrupt or the media is corrupt? And my, from my experience and the experience of a lot of people is that the media is very much corrupt, and the media plays with people's minds, so they won't see the real things that are really going on. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Now, you know, coming to the subject that uh, we were going to come up with, uh, you know, talking about the law and about salvation, Rick, and uh, what you talked about the Muslims, uh, you know, like we've been talking about for a long time, that, you know, people – especially in the Christian world, do not see a tie between the Muslims and the Christians. And there's very much a a tie because if you remember, those two people were brothers. They came out of the same father. And and, uh, if you see the Muslim religion, everything is just about, you know, all the way down to Moses, uh, you know, uh, and the law and, and everything. Everything is down the line the same way. So what, what the Christian world and the Muslim world are both seeing is Satan continuously using the law and people of the law to create havoc. And, uh, and you will be able to go back in history and you will see this havoc created even by Christians themselves. Uh, you know, the law... If we do not come to an understanding of what the law was and what was its purpose, we will completely be lost as to what's happening now, as to what happened in the past and everything, because we won't be able to see to the extent that people are blinded towards the law and trying to observe something that could not be observed by anybody except for God, because he is the only perfect being that could observe the law. You know, there's no other person that could observe the law. So Christians and Muslims and all people around the world, all kinds of religion, they pick pick and choose laws. And even the laws, it's so funny because even the laws that they pick, they can even themselves, uh, 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 you know, uh, 
comply with them. Uh, look at what hap was happening in Africa. Uh, I mean, it's almost a shadow of what happened in the in the Bible with the uh, with the Hebrews. Uh, they kidnapped, uh, as you remember, uh, uh, a year uh, about a year ago. They kidnapped all those little girls from that school. So what do they do? So they could go around the law and say that they observe the law. They marry them, right? right. And then when they get when they get tired of those girls, they divorce them. So another person will get uh, marry them. So they're saying that they're abiding by the law, but you know that that's not the way the law is. They're just Taking and choosing and adjusting the laws as they think that the law is, hmm. but, but they neither they neither could observe the law as they think that it is, nor do, do they observe the law as to the intention of the law. You see, so they're not doing nothing with the law. They're saying that they're law abiding, but they're far from law abiding, and 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 so it is. That's the nature of this world. Well, and speaking the nature of this world, there is a real, real evil nature going on out there when it comes to some of the things that are that are happening. You know, um, True News reported something really interesting about the New World Order uh, using the uh, satanic ritual to unveil Gothard train tunnel. Um, because of the overwhelming response to the art article, and uh, the associated video true news has been inundated with the immersed surge of traffic to its website. This was an incredible uh, video about Switzerland unveiled the world's longest and deepest railroad tunnel with a deeply occultic satanic ceremony at the Gothard trade tunnels, Northern uh, Northern portal in Switzerland, hundreds of dignitaries, including Italian prime minister, uh, Matteo Renzi, Switzerland's president, Johann Schneider Amann, Germany's Chancellor <laughs> Angela Merkel, France's President Francois Hollande, or Hollande, or whatever, how you pronounce his name, <laughs> attended the Illuminati ceremony, or Illuminati esque ceremony. The Gothard ritual was split into two separate events one for elite dignitaries inside the tunnel, and the other outside for the thousands of public attendees. Both were laced with graphic demonic symbolism and broadcast live across the world through RT, BBC, and other major European outlets. And the indoor ceremony followed a similar yet scaled-down version of the outdoor ritual and was coordinated by German director Volker Hesse. The ritual, dubbed by BBC as lavish performance, was originally intended to represent various aspects of Swiss culture. It included 600 dancers, acrobatic, dramatic actors, and uh, cost them a roughly $8.9 million. The performance began with a cohort of miners dressed in orange jumpsuits, marching like zombies toward the tunnel's entrance depicted on a video screen. The miners then seemingly sacrificed to the tunnel and emerged as veiled spirits, represented by dancers in underwear with white wedding veils. Wow. And an actor dressed as a goat sprung out and began ritualistically consuming and mating with the veiled dancers. During this segment, a headshot of the actor dressed as a goat was displayed on the video screen with a black and red backdrop and an absorbing fire lofting around his face, while three Egyptian scarabs floated in front of the screen. The next scene shifted to pagan druid ceremony with actors now draped in black subdued clothing and adorning nests, plants, and trees on their heads. As the goat man laid on the floor, an upside down tree was displayed on the video screen and the actors chanted a song in a mix of ancient Germanic and Italian. The ceremony ends with the goat man being resurrected and worshiped as he is introduced to technology industry and modern society with many of the actors clothed as cross dressers, drifters and harlots. Oh, wow. the, the beginning portion with the miners being sacrificed to the tunnel is especially eerie because uh, nine workers, four Germans, three Italians and one each from South Africa 
and Austria, Austria died in accidents while the tunnel was under construction. Swiss media reported that their deaths are com- commemorated by a plaque dedicated to St. Barbara, the patron saint of mining near the northern end of the tunnel. Who was St. Barbara? She was a third century Christian martyr who was beheaded for her faith during the Roman occupation of Necromedia. In the story's oldest form, recounted by author C.E. Gregory, St. Barbara was promised by her father, Dioscuros, to marry a very prosperous man with the goal of increasing their family fortune. At first, Barbara asked time to reflect. Following uh, her father's return from a long journey, Barbara explained to her father, that she was a Christian and did not wish to marry. She had already removed the different images of pagan gods from her living room and uh, quarters and replaced them with crucifixes. Uh, Dioscuros, seeing that his only child had turned to the new religion and that he himself had been placed at a disadvantage, was overcome with rage. He handed over his daughter as a Christian to the Roman proconsul. Martianus, a Supreme Court judge for the assessment of punishment. Martianus tried at first, by kind persuasion, to make her break with her faith. But when this failed, he had her thrashed and cast into a jail. Due to the strength of her face, her wounds were healed immediately. On the following day, she, she was, due to the strength of her faith, I said face, I think, but the following day, she was ordered by Martianus to pay sacrifice to the pagan gods. When she refused, she was mutilated in a dreadful way. When she continued to proclaim her Christian faith, she was sentenced to die by the sword. Barbara went to her place of execution in cheerful ecstasy with her enthusiasm for her true faith. Her last wish was that God, through her experience, help all those confronted with the un and unprepared for a sudden untimely death. Dioscuros was so outraged that he himself severed his daughter's head. Immediately following Barbara's death, a terrible thunderstorm arose. As a punishment for monstrous crime, Dioscuros was killed by lightning. There are many churches, mines, works, art, named after or produced in remembrance of St. Barbara. One yes. example of is Barbara Cathedral in Cuttersburg, and this was a satanic ritual. I mean, there's no other way around it. And these are the leaders of the countries around the world that are doing this. And it's like, okay, all these reports about Luciferians, people better wake up. Mm-hmm. It's here. It's already here. And there's so much more going on, Albert. There is, for example, a lot of people don't realize another thing that's going on is that your um, if you're in um, um, if you're if you have money in cash investments like money market funds, there was a letter sent out to everybody who had money market funds and letting them know that they're actual treasuries. Well, that means your money is completely vulnerable by the government anytime they want. And people don't realize it. Well, all you got to do is Google pensions and problems with pensions. They're being taken. They're being delayed. People can't get their money. It's going all over the planet right now. Why? Here's what I believe. This is Rick Johnson believing this. So this is nothing that I, you know, am using as a source other than I, I feel it in my spirit. They're setting up the economic system, and I think I know how they're going to do it. What they're going to do is they're going to do a jubilee because they're actually talking about it. A jubilee, for those who are not familiar with it, is every 50 years, um, God set it up to where debt would be wiped out. Debt would be wiped out, okay? So the world governments are actually discussing doing a jubilee so that debt all across the world is going to be wiped out. So if you have all this debt, it's going to be wiped out. But it's going to come with a caveat. The caveat is going to be you have to accept the new world system. Hmm. You have to accept and be a part of the new world order. You have to pledge your allegiance to this new digital age, and they're going to get rid of cash. And they're going to do it by 
getting you to, I agree to have all my debt wiped and in here, go ahead and inject that little, that little thing in my hand. And I believe that's coming and I believe it's coming quickly. Um, why do I say that? If you look around what's going on with all the finances between uh, China, they're buying up all the gold and they're buying up all the vaults, the vaults to store the gold. And the United States is in a bad situation. We have more debt than anybody probably. And we're upside down. We're, we're absolutely indebted. And we're going to need a new monetary system because the dollar will be worthless. And they're setting it all up. They've already got the one world government in place. They're working on the one world economic system. And then they're also working on the one world religion to be head up by the Pope. I know that's very controversial for a lot of people who are out there, but I, I really believe that's what's happening. Well, you know, it's, it's so funny because uh, Santa Barbara is well known within the Cuban people. Uh, they, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a satanic system in the Spanish world, which is called Santeria. And one of Santeria's uh, 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 big wigs is Santa Barbara. Really? And, uh, yes, it is. And uh, uh, they disguised uh, Santa Barbara as, as being the Virgin Mary. And uh, they also uh, disguised her uh, as a god. Uh, you know, a lot of this are rituals uh, that came down from Africa which were gods and, and, and they were masqueraded as, uh, as Christian saints or Catholic saints. So all this goes together with, uh, with really pretty, pretty nasty stuff, uh, pretty nasty mm. stuff. And, uh, you know, and, and, uh, well, yeah, uh, you, it, it's, uh, there's different goddesses and, uh, you know, there's like a guy called Chango. Which, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's satanic wow. stuff. real satanic stuff. Yeah. So, uh, I, I've never heard of it before. And uh, now that you mentioned it, I just Googled a little bit. There's a ton of stuff out here about uh, how it is a satanic. It's, got, it's been around for over 400 years. There's over 100 million memberships to it. Yeah. Uh, the numbers have been bulking up due to the Mexican drug cartels being drawn into it under the name of La Santa Muerte. So I don't think it's the same. Santa Barbara is not the same as this. It's La Santa M-U-E-R-T-E. Yeah. Yeah, or but I, the Holy Dead. Yeah. If you look at uh, Google Santeria and Santa Barbara together, you will see the... Uh, correlation between uh, uh, both of those things. But, you know, it's terrible. I mean, even what you said, the last time there was a one world government, this one world government thing is not a, a thing that uh, has come out recently or a thing that has never been approached by man. This has actually been approached by man before. And that's in the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel, if you remember, there was one tongue and all the people of the world got together. And as you, as you remember, what happened in the Tower of Babel is that things did not go very good for those people because, again, they were into, into worshiping gods and, and even calling themselves God. Uh, you remember uh, Estra, which was the, the, the uh, wife of the king of Babel, uh, Esther, uh, you know, she put herself as the goddess of fertility. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I'm, and that's where we get all the little bunnies and we get all that stuff. You know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad when, when, when the world gets together, when people get together in this world and never ends up good, never ends up good. <laughs> wow. Wow. This is, uh, God's taking this thing a whole different direction. It's really good. Um, you know, you're right. It's been around a very long time, uh, pretty much since Adam and Eve uh, <laughs> is where 
the new world order has been initiated because eventually God, our, uh, Satan wants to be God of the earth. And he always wanted to be God of the earth. He wanted to put himself as the position of God. Well, you know, we were talking this morning, and one of the things that set out to me was on the church was that God warns against rejecting Christ. And, you know, I found also in Hebrews uh, 10, 26, it, it warns of those who reject Christ. And it says, uh, for if we sin willfully after we have rejected the knowledge of the truth, there remain no more a sacrifice for sins. This is a very bad translation right there. I think, I think that, that translation is not really good. Um, and the, the actual sin they're talking about there is the sin of apostasy, which is the sin of unbelief. Um, for if we choose to have unbelief after we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. So if you don't believe that Christ was enough, that's really what he's saying. But a certain fearful looking for judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under just two or three witnesses. Of How much more sore punishment, suppose you, that shall be thought worthy who hath trodden under the foot of God, or under the foot, the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing done despite unto the Spirit of the grace. If we read that in kind of a newer version, it might make a little more sense because of the way they wrote it there. Um, Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severe punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as an unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the spirit of grace? So all these people who are doing these satanic rituals around the earth they're flat out, number one, rejecting Christ. That's, they're, they're, they're actually pledging allegiance to Satan. I mean, let's just get it straight. But even more so, if, if you're a, it, let's say you're a um, professed Christian, but you live by the law of Moses, and you're trying to hold yourself up by your works, or you're a pastor, and you're teaching them that they have to hold themselves up by their ability and their works, what's the difference? There's really no difference. Rejection of Christ is a rejection of Christ. No matter how religious it looks like or no matter how demonized it looks like, it doesn't really matter because when you reject the Christ, the account towards you is rejection. The, like we have said before, man is not going to be, man is not going to be out there judged by God by his works, whether good or bad. He's going to be judged by the rejection of Christ. Christ himself said that if you accept me in this world, I will go and pronounce you in the other world. If you reject me in this world, I will not pronounce you in the other world. I will not, I, I, I will, I will not call you out as one of mine in the other world. Right. So it's, 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 it's a, a clear rejection no matter how it is. Where there is a religion, and, and let me tell you, 99%, let's say 95% of the rejections that are, are going to be judged are rejections really of religious, uh, 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 you know, uh, standards. Because, uh, yes, there will be some people that will, re that will be rejected by Christ because they're not religious. Or just like they had that march in Washington, D.C. Uh, this week, uh, atheists, atheists. Well, those people, they're going to be marched, they marched out and they don't believe in God and they don't believe in anything. But let me tell you that atheism is a religion. They do believe in something. But you're going to have those people judged and you're going to have the religious people judge right next to them, right next to them. One is going to be saying, oh, yeah, we, didn't, we never believed in God, so we're going to be judged. And then the other people that are going to be next to them are going to say, but wait a minute. We heard of Christ and we follow Christ, 
but we trusted in the law, you see? So their rejection is going to be that, yeah, by, by name they called out Christ and everything, but in their hearts they really never accepted the truth of their salvation. They've always followed their own self-righteousness in order for them to be saved. So both of them are going to be in the same line. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Well, there's a lot, there's a lot there, you know, there's a lot of information there. Let's go to, let's go to um, first Timothy here. Uh, one, six through nine, you were talking about this before the show and this was really good. And I, I wanted to make sure that uh, our audience heard this from we're in first Timothy chapter one, verse six, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling let's go to new american standard on this i think it's going to be a little easier for our audience here for some men straying from these things have turned aside to fruitless discussion wanting to be teachers of the law even though they do not understand either what they are saying or the matters about which they make confident assertions but we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully realizing the fact that the law is not made for a righteous person so who's it made for it's made as it goes on to say but for those who are lawless rebellious ungodly and sinners unholy and profane for those who kill their fathers or mothers and for murderers and immoral men, homosexuals, kidnappers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound teaching. I just read the word that offended you. Then you are unlearned. Let me show you what I mean. So, Albert, let me ask you this. Who is this for? Those, what it's talking about there, you know, about lawless, well, let me tell you something. How the law states, the law states that if you break one law, okay, one law of the 613 known laws to man, which, by the way, there's a lot more laws because the law is a shadow of God's righteousness. So it's an infinite, the laws that exist out there, but we just don't know about them. But what it's actually saying there is that anybody who's under the law is all of this. If you stole for somebody, you are unholy, you're profane, you, you have just killed your mother, you have just killed your brother, you are a homosexual, you are a kidnapper, you are a liar, you're everything that is stated there. Why? Because if you break one law, you're guilty of all the law. Right. So what it's actually saying there. It's not a, that if you perform all these things that you are a lawbreaker. What it's saying is that no matter which law you break, you are all these things. You're all these things. Because you broke one, right? Because you broke one and you're guilty of all of them. So those of you who think that you're under the law, that you're so-called morally pure, and you go and laugh or protest a homosexual or a person who just killed somebody, you could put yourself in that little boat too because according to the law, you are as guilty as they are for the same law. <laughs> Ain't that something? Yes. That is what the law is. That is what the law is. So stop playing with that little thing because that little law is going to burn you. Yeah. And you are as guilty as anybody else because the only, the only righteousness that man could ever have is a righteousness that ha has been given to you by God because he's the only righteous human being, the only righteous person out there is God. And he has decided that by faith, he will give you his, his righteousness. You know, and if we continue, you know, he says, whatever else is contrary to sound teaching, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which I have been entrusted, 
And he says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, putting me into service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, persecutor, and violent aggressor, yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. Mm. So if, if you are acting in unbelief, you're acting, acting in ignorance. And the grace of our Lord was more than abundant with the faith and the love which we are found in Christ Jesus. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners among whom I am foremost of all. Yet for this, me, uh, I found mercy so that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. Let me ask you something, uh, Rick. This letter right here was a letter written by Paul to Timothy. Right. Uh, right here, he says in, in one thirteen, he says that I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, a uh, an aggressor. Uh, do you think at, at that moment, from that moment on, Paul never did any mistakes? The, the people out there actually think that Paul did not persecuted somebody for for whatever reason if no. you think that let me tell you that you're very much mistaken because paul is not god paul made a lot of mistakes before and after this okay the reason why paul was a formerly a blasphemer and he was formerly a persecutor and formerly a violent aggressor and so on and so on a kidnapper a killer of his mother and dad uh uh a uh, homosexual. I mean, the reason <laughs> the reason that he was not that anymore is because Paul was no longer under the law. Okay, well, let me ask you this, Albert, since we're live on air here and uh, we're going to be sharing this with the world. Let's take one of them. Um, let me see here. We'll go back up and we'll say, let's take this one. Person who's homosexual, then they accept Jesus Christ. But they don't stop the physical act of being with someone of the same sex. Where do you place those people? You place them in the righteousness of God. Yes. Because, because those people who are homosexuals or who have done any type of dealings according to the flesh, it, their, their status or who they are, is not determined by the actions that they have done. But what determines somebody's status according to God, in other words, being a son of God, what determines that status is being born again, being born in Christ. You okay. see, my name, my name is Albert Delgado. You see, I was born with that name. I was born Albert Delgado. With a whether I, be, whether I go and steal, whether I go and kill somebody, whatever you choose, whether I become a homosexual, whatever you choose about that list has not become my name or my identity. Because my identity, I was born in Albert Delgado, and that will never change. Neither good works. I could go and live in my parents' house, my mom's house, my father passed away, and I could clean that house with a toothpick and a toothbrush, and after I finish that, it does not make me more an Albert Delgado. I will still be an Albert Delgado, and my mom <laughs> is gonna come to me and say, you idiot, that's never gonna change who you were born. You were born an Albert Delgado, and if you think that you coming in my house and cleaning up, you're going to get more of my name, you're crazy because you're not. And so it is with bad works. Because, again, what determines who you are, your identity, according to God, because the identity is not really according to man, it's according to God. He's the one who decides everything. According to God, 
what determines your identity is your faith. It's your faith in him. He says it in many places that those who are born of God carry his seed. Now, that is a very interesting thing. And I'm, that's in 1 John. And, and that seed is very interesting. You see, because as a man being married to a woman, my children carry my seed. You see? And my children could change their names. They could do whatever they want to, but that would never change where they came from. You see? Mm -hmm. I could... Uh, let's put it this way. I live in the South, okay? I live in South Carolina. I could go over there any time and talk to anybody in South Carolina, and the first thing that they'll tell me is that you're not from around here, are you? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what I do. I'm not from around there. Why? I was born in Cuba. And I, by the way, I, I kid around with them, and I tell them, well, I don't know why you're making fun of me because I'm a Southern. And they, they look at me weird, and they go, you're a Southern? And I go, yeah. I go, I was born in Cuba. Ain't that South? <laughs> so, so, you know, so being born, and that's what we are when we come to Christ, that will never change by any actions that you do, whether good or bad, because it's a birth thing. It's not an action thing. It's an actual birth. You have been born of Christ. Now, if you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, that's another act. That's another, that's another thing. You shouldn't be doing those things because of your identity. That's not your identity. Your identity is in Christ. So you ought to be trying to follow things of your family. You so think? basically then their identity in Christ is still identity in Christ. But, you know, I don't know for me, I mean, I'm going to speak for me, but yeah. There's a lot of things that I did that I don't do today. And the reason I don't do them is because I, I love, I love Christ's goodness and mercy. And I don't want that to be taken in vain. So it's a heart thing. Right. It's not a physical thing. So what you're doing is you're separating the physical body, the flesh side from the spiritual side, right? Well, that is one point, and, it, and that's a very, very good point because the Bible does say that the goodness of God is what makes people to repent, yes. right? right? So that is a very valid point, but also so there's another point to, to this. There's another side to this coin, and that is the side that the Spirit is in you, working in you. And the way the Spirit works in a believer is it works on him by always affirming to a believer who he is. In other words, the, the Holy Spirit does not work in a believer by condemnation, by accusation. That's the work of the devil. The Holy Spirit works in a person by his identity. So what the Holy Spirit does through the whole life of a person is confirms to that person his identity. And so as you grow in that identity, you, you will do less and less things of this world because the things of this world, the system of this world, will become foreign to you because we'll start knowing who you are. And, and that's, that takes a whole lifetime, just like it takes a whole lifetime to realize how much God really loves you. You see? So... The spirit works in you, your identity. And, and, and so it enforces that all the time. The spirit is always telling you, remember what we talked about love, but the Bible talks about love, that love is long suffering, love is good, love is patience. And so the Holy Spirit is like that way with you. The Holy Spirit is telling you, Aubrey, you're good. Yes, but God, look at what I just said. I just killed somebody. But yes, you did. And it's not good. It's not good because that's not your identity, Albert. But that's okay because your identity has not changed. Now, you could do better as you grow and understand who you are and understand who your father is. You see, 
because your father cares for people, Albert. And so you will come to grow and understand that you will also care for people. Your father will not steal from anybody. Your father, your father will do this type of deals. And that's okay because I'm not forcing you. You see, you're going to grow into that, Albert. And you will, you're going to come to understand yourself and you're going to come to understand your father, whether it be this year, next year, or on the day you, or on the day that you die. But you will come into a complete understanding of, as to who your father is. And when you find out who your father is, you will look at yourself and you will see yourself as your father is. So that understanding is different from many people. Some people will never go through this whole, this whole lifetime, even though they're Christians. They will, they, they will, unfortunately, it will be sad. But unfortunately, they will not come to the, at least half of this understanding until they die. You see? Some people, they will come to the, this understanding where they're young. That's why, that's why the Bible says that, that's, that it's good to teach them from their youth. But from the, their youth, they will grow into coming into this understanding. Unfortunately, this world is a corrupt world. And what we learn a lot of times about ourselves is corruption. You see? Instead of the goodness of God and our true identity in Christ. Mm. We're going on to 1 Timothy 1.15. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am foremost of all. Yet for this reason I found mercy. So because Jesus came into the world to save sinners— for that reason, Paul found mercy, so that in Paul, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. You, you, you know, let me, let me say something here for a second. You know, we could see in Paul... Uh, that he himself, even after he became a Christian and he, and he came to the belief of Christ, that there was things that he did that he wasn't proud of. He sure. even says that he goes, Hey, listen, he goes, the things that I, I would like to do, I don't do them. The things that I know that I should do, I do them, you know, and this is Paul after he came to Christ. So, does Paul condemn himself? No, He's, he doesn't condemn himself. You know what he does? He gives thanks to God because he is a new creation. He knew his identity. Even though he suffered, you know, the works of the flesh, just like everybody else. Everybody, I mean, just because I'm St. Albert and I know my identity and all that, it doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes. I do make mistakes. In fact, if you follow me, Rick, <laughs> with a little notebook, you will you will be able to fill up that notebook. But I got good news for you that in a years from now, probably there will be maybe two or three of those things missing from that notebook if you decided to follow me again. Well, let's use your example from earlier. You are Albert Delgado. Does the fact that you does the fact that you robbed a bank, not that you robbed a bank, I know you didn't, right. does the fact that maybe you rob a bank change that you're Albert Delgado? No, no. I will never change it. Does the fact that maybe you said some words that you shouldn't have said, that you did things you shouldn't have done behind closed doors, that you went to websites you shouldn't do, right. it doesn't change your name. It doesn't change your identity. That's why... Christ tells us that we have to be reborn. So in our fleshly state, in our worldly state, we're sinners. And then once we're reborn, we have a new identity. That's why this is all about the sun is rising. The sun, as you mentioned earlier, is different than the enemy, Satan. Satan condemns you. Look what you've done because he has the law to hold you up against. Once you understand the law is abolished, now there's no more 
tool that Satan has to hold you up against. Once you've accepted Christ and you realize that there's no more law, then are you saying that I can just go out there and do anything that I want to do? Well, that's the exact same objection that Paul got in uh, chapter 6 of Romans. And he says, by no means. The real question isn't, now you have the freedom to go do what you want to do. The question is, do you really want to go hurt people in your heart knowing you've been forgiven everything? Mm -hmm. Do you really want to do that in your heart? The answer is no, obviously. And if you're reasonable at all, if you're some evil little spirit, then first of all, you can't even say, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and savior, because you can't do that. If you're an evil spirit, um, you have to confess him, but we're going to, we're going to go to tip first Timothy four. But the Spirit explicitly says that in latter times, that would be today, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. What did we just start this whole show off with? What was going on overseas when they did the tunnel? It was a Luciferian demonic demonstration that was happening there. Okay, that's why we're in latter times. By means of hypocrisy of liars, what is the word liar? The Bible tells us that the word liar is those who do not accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Those are liars. Seared in their own conscience, as with a branding iron. Men who forbid marriage advocate abstaining from foods, which God has created to be gratefully shared and by those who believe and know the truth. Wait a minute. You mean I don't have to abstain from that food anymore that I was supposed to abstain from, that I was told that I had to abstain from on Lent or whatever else day that I've got to abstain from? No, it's meant to be gratefully shared. God loves you. He says, eat, be merry, have fun, enjoy life, because I paid for everything for you. And it says, for everything created by God is good. And nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude. So just be thankful that you've got all this stuff, right? For it is sanctified by means of the word of God and prayer. That's why it's important, I believe, I think, it's not a ritual, it's not a requirement, but I think it's important to pray because there's so many poisons in the foods today. That's why the Bible tells us, as a Christian, you can eat poison and it will not hurt you. It says that in the Bible. It tells us that. Very interesting. So by praying over your food, you have supernatural intervention, and the food is purified. In pointing out these things to the brethren, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, constantly nourished on the word of faith and of the sound doctrine which you have been following, but have nothing to do with the worldly fables fit only for the old women. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. We could get into that some other time, but we're running out of daylight. For bodily discipline is only a little of little profit. So there's hardly any profit of body discipline. I think it also says exercise gives you little profit. But godliness is profitable for all things since it holds the promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Yeah, the, the body uh, uh, discipline. Uh, what it, you know, what, what what they're really talking about there is like people who are, uh, you know, I lived in Mexico, and uh, there used to be uh, temples in Mexico that uh, the people uh, that were run by uh, the Catholic Church, the people will come for miles, for miles, and their knees to get up to the temple and misuse their bodies and those knees as you could as you could figure out those knees were all bleeding and uh people who uh whipped themselves to sacrifices i mean all that there is no bodily sacrifice that god will come and tell you that that oh you're you're being so good to me uh uh you know that's that that is so good uh, these are things that, believe it or not, Rick, they're practiced today. They're practiced today. There's people that go out and nail themselves in crosses. And they beat themselves with their little whips. They and, beat themselves. Yeah. And, 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 and they're, they think that they're, somehow they're sharing in God's sacrifice. 
you know, and, and all of this has to do with what is saying there about the torturing of your bodies, you know, uh, you know, uh, there's people that think that, that, uh, that, that they sustain from foods like, uh, you know, uh, that somehow they're going to bend the hand of God, you know, for God to do something for them, you know, and, and, and I understand that the Bible talks about sustaining them food sometimes, which we call fasting. But let me tell you something about fasting. If you read the Bible, you will find out that most of the people that fasted in the Bible weren't even fasting, not even a day. It was hours. And the reason why they fasted was, so just like everything else, you cannot do two things at the same time. You could fast from either food or other things. So... <laughs> You're never going to bend God's hands by doing that. The only, re the only way you will bend his hands is by trusting in our Savior. Oh, what a great last word that was, brother. Trusting in our Savior, as St. Albert tells us about. You know, life is God. Life is Christ. Life is in him not your ability to abstain from food not in your ability to even abstain from matrimony it says but it's in him totally 100 percent. we had so many more things we we were going to cover but you know it seems like this hour goes so fast even faster than our church hour brother <laughs> but it goes so fast because we dive into the freedom of Christ. He gives us the freedom to discuss his word and to share it with those out there who have a hunger and a desire to know more and to love and to have love. Keep in mind, you are righteous. Join us as we share the gospel all over the world at God News Network. Tell your friends about us. We're here each and every week on Sunday live. You get to listen to us at 8 p.m. GodNewsNetwork.com, GodNewsNetwork.com. And if you're looking for a church, one of the things I want to let you know is Saints Without Walls, we have launched, is now growing. SaintsWithoutWalls.com, SaintsWithoutWalls.com. It says join by video, but keep in mind, we can't see you. Only you can see us, for it is in a webinar type fashion. But join us. We want to share the greatest news that has ever existed of all time. And remember, you are righteous, you are a saint, and you are holy. For this is the mystery that has been hidden for ages and from generations, but now being revealed to you. For you are a saint. Brother Albert, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Thanks for partnering with me on this journey and this destiny we have together. Be well. Have a beautiful day.